get started too. A little something brewing over there. That's Craig. He's doing a very special couple pieces um, for a very special video next week. You do not want to miss it. We uh, are closing the shop early, having a long weekend somewhere very fun. Race cars going on the trailer. You'll uh, have to make sure you wait till next week, but don't miss the video because I have a feeling it's going to be a very good one. We are back on another episode. Today we are on Ben's Roadster. As you can see, motor's not in there. Motor's off to machining, which is excellent. Uh, should get that back within a few weeks, hopefully. Uh, we've ordered all the bits and pieces that we need externally and internally for the motor itself. But on this one, we're in the cockpit and um, What's, what's kind of been modified in here uh, previous to, you know, probably when they were using it racing is they've actually taken out the whole back of the fuel tank. Uh, for those who don't know, on a Model A like this, this whole top of the cowl is actually the fuel tank and there would be traditionally a, um, a filler right here. So when you jump up, that's where you'd fill it. You'd have a gauge and stuff in there. So. This is kind of the, the factory pressings that they've used. And then they've obviously cut the whole back end out. And that's kind of where all the wiring is sitting at the moment. And a few gauges, looks like a sight glass for something. I'm not sure what was exactly there. But what I want to do is just make a kind of a simple, probably traditionally looking dash for this. Um, and this is just basically going to be the layout and I'll cut the holes for the actual gauges themselves. The top panel that goes along this, um, they're different for uh, like a closed cab or a coupe versus an open car one. And I have another one of these that doesn't have this notch here for the um, little 12 volt winch, winch, windshield wiper. For the bottom swage that'll go along the whole bottom, um, I think we may even be able to fluke and use the tooling and the power hammer that we used in order to create the lower inner um, skin for the, for the door. So it kind of has the same profile. So I'm gonna try it. And, and it, you know, honestly, if it doesn't look right, we can just make another one or try something different. But I kind of have a feeling we're gonna maybe alter it slightly. It'd be really nice to have the two um, larger gauges for our speedo and our tack. And then we'll do have two on either side. So it'll kind of just be laid out along the whole dash. And um, yeah, should look kind of cool. If you guys are enjoying these videos as well, make sure you click that subscribe button and the notification one as well. So you know when we're bringing out new videos. We also had a little joke about this, about naming. And there was a couple, couple names that popped up. I think a um, gentleman by the name of Barry Wallace came up with Black Magic. Kind of cool. I still kind of think it'd be neat to maybe tie something in with the 3650 that was originally on here for its numbers. Maybe like the 3650 special or something like that and kind of carrying the numbers into a little bit of a different transformation. It'd be kind of cool to see what you guys come up with. So make sure you comment below and let us know what you think. Anyways, let's get into this.
All right, so as you just saw, that was a fair bit of work getting all the old um, electrical out of there. And uh, yeah, the old, da old dash, the top rail, there was a channel that was riveted on that kind of held that plexiglass in. It's out the um, upper dash kind of panel that goes across the little header piece. It was notched out and they had done a really nice job of actually putting the, the um, windshield wiper motor down here, which was quite cool. Luckily in our spare parts of stuff, we did have another uh, top panel. It's got a little bit of pitting, it's just, just a small amount, but what I'm gonna do is just cut that little tiny piece out and replace that and she's, she's as good as gold. Um, this is the panel that was actually out of Kyle's coupe. Um, and this one's obviously for kind of a, I mean, you could adapt it and make it into anything. We held a different dash up and stuff, but I think what we're gonna do is make something a little bit similar to this, but a lot simpler. Um, reason being is we don't really need to have this big dip, um, although it does look really nice. It is kind of hard to fabricate, but what I'm thinking is just kind of a nice simple panel with maybe a small one of those that would kind of just follow this same profile. Once that's all in there, like I mentioned, we'll have our lines just so we know where the gauges are gonna go. I may make a really nice panel that goes in here and we might get a little creative on that drill press and put our, our little engine turning die in there and we might do a full full one piece and not, you know, kind of like your traditional little bezel that they'd have, if they, they look really nice as a full one piece across the dash and that would have all of our instruments on there. So. What we're going to do is just run over. I'm going to transfer this onto another piece of steel, make a few more measurements, and uh, alter it slightly, but still kind of keeping the same somewhat profile and uh, see what we can come up with. So we've made our template, sort of. Um, I haven't quite trimmed the top end yet, but I'm just kind of working on the bottom and then we're gonna be able to finesse it as we get in there. So I'd probably, you could get away with doing like a cardboard template and making your own design and stuff, but I was able to cheat a little bit by utilizing that other dash, um, the aftermarket one, and kind of just got some rough measurements off of it. So um, I've got my, this is a, a bit here that'll be float folded at 90 degrees as well as this side. And that's gonna pick up kind of both sides of the, um, of the cowl itself. And then as well as we've just run a scribe line around here. And what I need to do with this is I'm gonna run it through the bead roller with the tipping die. And we're gonna bend this to a 90 degree. Um, and then once that's done, hopefully I don't know, I don't think I should have to use any shrinking. I might have to. Um, 
But then once that's done and set at 90 degrees, I can then go over to the die itself um, that we had designed for the lower door panel. And that should be able to, um, to just jump it in there, run a few passes on it, and we should get that really nice lip on the bottom of this. So we're gonna give it a try and see if it, see if it works. The reason why we're using the tipping wheel, it's kinda pretty clear, but we obviously can't just put this into a brake and bend it at 90 degrees because of the curves that we have. So the tipping die helps us create that 90 degree edge with you know having shape or curves to to your to your panel. We got a special guest today. Working on his his dad's roadster. Might even become his one day. When there's like flying cars and he'll be like, Dad, serious? You giving me a shit box hot rod? <laughs> Runs through my lashes. Oh, it's taken 40 years, blood, sweat, and tears. All right, so we just ran that through about four times through the tipping um, die on the bead roller. And as you can see, we definitely have a bit of distortion, which is kind of standard. So what I'm gonna do is just grab the shrinker and stretcher, and we are gonna shrink right here. And then we actually have to stretch a few times in this area. And then once we get this nice and flat again, then we can go and set up the dies in the power hammer and we'll be able to um, run a pass across and see if it'll work. All right, so we're over on the power hammer and uh, the dies that I've just set up in here are the ones that we had uh, previously used for the lower door repair on the inside panel of our Roadster. So um, Carl actually made these when we were originally um, trying to fix that and, uh, and they worked out perfect. So I just did a little test piece there and this is, if that kind of looks familiar to you guys, that is kind of the, the bottom profile, almost exact. So um, what I think, like to be honest, I could probably modify it slightly to, to make it maybe a bit larger or something, but this looks really nice. Like I think that would look quite well as a, as a bottom swage or bead line that goes along the bottom of the dash. Um, so I'm really, I'm really pleased with the way that looks and I think it's gonna look really cool. So what we've done, I have just run this through the shrinker and stretcher and I've just put a straight edge on it to try and get it as close as possible. And I've uh, spent a bit of time on it and got it um, relatively straight, almost, um, I wouldn't say perfect, but it's, it's definitely very close. So what I wanna do is, um, this is kind of set up with that, the reason we kind of put that break in there so that we can kind of get it set up in, the, in here. And then we're just gonna run this all the way across through there we're probably going to do maybe three passes. I think this one was, was about three passes. So, um, and with each pass, we just slowly bring the dies closer and closer together. Um, they don't actually um, necessarily hit each other. You kind of set it up where you can, you, I mean, almost do just the thickness of, uh, of this, the sheet metal itself. Um, and then that way we're not like stretching anything, which is really good. So we don't want to stretch it. We're just trying to form it. Um, into place. So we are going to get this set up. I've just kind of realized I might need to pull the hammer out a little bit. This is our kind of our new little tool 
tool wall and I'm trying to just work it out. It's a bit congested. So, but you need to kind of set it up, try a few tools and then realize, okay, they need a little bit more space. So I think I might move the welders and kind of move this stuff all down and space them out a little bit better so that each time, especially with the shrinker and stretcher, um, you know, you don't want to have to pull them out all the time and set them up. You just want to walk up to a tool, use it, go over to the next one, use it. So it's a lot nicer, um, you know, for storage purposes, it's always great to just kind of have stuff tucked away and we're not using the power hammer or the planishing hammer every single day, but it's just purely that kind of efficiency. You just want to walk up to the tool and be able to use it. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. We're make, making more room out of the space we have. And I feel like we've, we've kind of, uh, we actually made more room out of it, which was great. So I'm just gonna pull this forward a little bit. very happy with the way that that turned out. It looks awesome. And you know, to some people it might just be kind of that generic 32 dash shape, but I think um, once we put the bezel in, it's going to look really cool. So this is the thing about not doing a cardboard template. We're kind of just, I've left a bit of excess material here and there, so I know where to go. Um, on these, on this outside here, I've left that 25 mil um, piece that I need to actually break at 90 degrees and that's going to allow us to pick up this side of the cowl um, where we can then um, yeah use a little fixing to to hold the dash on the bottom bit and then up in this area we'll just kind of work out how we're going to actually fix it um, using that top uh, header panel of the um, of the dash itself or the uh, top of the cowl so I'm going to run over to the break we're going to bend these areas uh, and then stick it back in there. S see exactly where this is going to sit on here. And then we can kind of make an idea of how we're going to do this bit here. So I think it's going to, um, yeah, it's going to look really neat. So we have our header panel. We painted it with a, just a rattle can satin black um, just to try and blend it in with the, the rest of the body. Um, replaced some hardware with some slotted stainless uh, quarter inch screws and I just kind of ran over and just hit the heads on the, uh, on the polishing wheel um, and didn't, I don't really want them to be like crazy high polish but it's just a nicer finish compared to the kind of darker satin that they, uh, they come with. What I had done was obviously behind this panel, I had to make two little um, uh, angle pieces and I just drilled and tapped them because there was nothing for this to actually screw into. Um, and so we have our very simple 
dash. We've put it in several times. We've trimmed it several times because it was sitting way down here. But we kind of did that on purpose that, so we could slowly kind of inch it um, closer and closer to where we like it. So we didn't obviously want a big, massive dash panel like that. So I'm hoping, I actually haven't seen this in yet. So if I can slide it up to where I think it will go. Okay, so you can kind of see what, we're, what we were trying to achieve. It's, um, it's really simple. Well, well, it's simple. We kind of had to use the power hammer. You could use other simple hand tools in order to get the same effect. Um, but I'm really pleased with the way it's come out. We kind of, as I mentioned, we kind of kept shrinking it a little bit more and more until we kind of got the profile right. But I really like how this bead matches this one. So it's all the same. So this, you kind of can't really see it probably in the camera, but it's got a really nice bead that follows all the way to the edge. And then it kind of folds over straight into this one. And uh, I just think the profiles, you know, look right. So it's obviously a super simple kind of panel. It still has a bit of play to it at the moment. Um, but what I'd like to do is kind of make a small little structure inside um, that comes down and will actually pick up the steering column. Super pleased with that. And I think we both just kind of sold the idea of doing an engine turned panel. So I'm going to do basically a template that is going to be the whole profile of this. So we're going to have it kind of come right into the corners with a tiny little radius there. And it's just going to maybe breathe about five mil right around this area. And then again, about five mil on the inside line of this bead. So once this is painted black and this is black, and then we just have a really nice kind of polished uh, engine turned panel then all those black Stuart Warner gauges are just gonna, I reckon it's gonna look incredible. We're just gonna try a piece of aluminum um, because we have it and, uh, and then we're just gonna run our engine turn um, little bits across using the drill press. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. And then afterwards, we'll just give it a little buff and uh, you know bring some of those highlights out and then uh, we'll stick it in here and see what it looks like. Let's get into it. So here is our cardboard template and tape transferred on. Um, this is 1.6 uh, aluminum. And I've kind of, I do have a center line on there that's always been there. That's how we measured it out. So the rest of this whole dash is going to be black. And then this is going to kind of stand out right like that. And this is going to be engine turned with a heaps of rows across the whole thing. Um, I was just saying to Ben off camera, hindsight, and I may do it, I may not do it, um, is probably the best bet would be to make a piece of aluminum rectangle with a nice straight edge that you can kind of run on a guide in your drill press, however you're gonna do it. And then you could go and run these across the whole way. All right, so we are over. I just cut another piece of aluminum. We have our template. Well, this was gonna be the original insert, but it's now gonna be our template. And this is kind of what I was trying to explain. So we have it on here, it's lined up, and then I can kind of just run, actually I might as well do it now while we're, while we're speaking. So this is our rough layout for our dash. So now when we're coming down with our little twirly twirly super fancy high tech device that we made for the drill press that allows us to get the uh, engine turned texture. When we come across this we can then just kind of start here run it across and as soon as we kind of run off the line stop. Then we can go back get close to the line run a few off and go across and stop. Because the worst thing you, you don't want is like to have the, them start like this. You want them to kind of run off the edge. So 
you don't want to run that, otherwise you're going to have a weird pattern. So you kind of, you know, like if you were to draw a straight line, and then this one's going to, your 50% overlap, like that, and then it's slowly going to go off the edge. But if we were doing this over there, and we were trying to do that, this thing is spinning on this edge, which makes it really tricky in order to get a nice finish. And it also burns this out really fast. So you kind of want to try and have a flat surface as much as possible. A little bit of lubrication helps um, and just keeps it from the aluminum uh, wanting to gum up inside here. So we're going to spray a little bit of secret sauce on there. And then we're going to go and run this over and do multiple passes. And hopefully we'll get the texture right. What I did here was I marked my center and I just used our um, center punch here and I just ran, popped two little holes there. So when I go across this, we can then clean everything, line this back up. We know where our center line is, we'll run it and then we can kind of cut that out, punch some holes and then we'll get this thing fixed up. So we're gonna walk over. So what I was explaining to you before is those Kratex sticks and then different textures. A lot of guys use like wooden dowels and they'll actually glue pieces of sandpaper on the bottom of them. That works as well. What I've used in the past and I feel like it works quite well, you just have to take your time. Um, these are the attachments for your uh, Rolock wheels um, that go on your little air grinders. And this one was obviously a, a 50 mil one and I just put it in the drill like that and then I just ran over to the belt sander and well, it actually just from time just got smaller and smaller. And then, so what I use is um, a brown, I believe it was a brown um, finishing pad and uh, that just kind of sits on there. So that is what I use. And I'll show you, we'll just do a quick little one on the template. And when I set these stuff up, I like to have a nice table that's nice and flat um, and then I obviously have a straight edge here that I can just clamp. So I can put this up against it. Bang, 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 bang. Comes off. We move it. Bang, 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 bang. Again. So you don't have to get too perfect with it. it well, I mean, if you were building a really, really nice show car, yeah, you'd want everything lined out like to the measurement because, you know, all those little small details count. With this one, we're going to kind of just get it close and just run as many as we can. And if you pick out small little imperfections, that's awesome. All right, so we have a little bit of lubrication here. That's just gonna help um, the uh, pad not to gum up. So I'm just gonna turn the drill press on and I'm just gonna kind of explain to you. So we got our nice little fence there in order to run across. And then we're just gonna come down, hold it, run it over, come down, 50% overlap, come across. All right, so there you have it. Simple, that was just a quick job. Once we wipe it off, you can then see how you really get that engine turned effect. And then when you go to do your next row, you're gonna again, you're gonna go the opposite. So you're gonna wanna be between both these at a 50% overlap. So as long as you kind of keep that 50% um, kind of number in your head, you should be able to get it. Okay, so here's our main panel. We are going to get started. A uh, couple things to be aware of. Uh, direction wise, you always have to start at one direction and work your way back. If you go and try and do like this side and then you spin it around and do this side, where those swirls are going to meet each other, they're not going to, one side's not going to overlap on the other. It's going to get a bit tricky. So you kind of want to um, pre think, forward thinking. Uh, when you're trying to lay this out so you know exactly where it's going to go. So we are going to get this set up and we are going to start to do some engine turning. <laughs>
right, so there is our original one. We then traced it on to our one we engine turned, and that is the final result. So you can really see how you get some really neat texture, and that, um, that last little like wipe off when you take all the, the oil off is just, yeah, it's really cool. So I think once we have that set up with our two big gauges and our two little ones right across the whole dash, and then our little bottom bit for our key. We are going to um, reuse the old key and the ignition for it, which is really cool. Um, just kind of passing it along. So what we need to do is get this fitted to that. A uh, couple ways of doing that. You could use screws. We did have these kind of slotted stainless screws with a little um, kind of cut washer, but they just look, they might be a bit too big. Um, we want it to be real subtle, so I am going to reuse those little aircraft aluminum rivets that uh, we used when we did Rex's hood. So that I'll be able to pull that dash out, bring it over here, we can set it up and just lightly hit these in. I am just going to quickly run and grab each one by, with a plier and then just we're just going to polish the top before we hit them in. So I think that'll look really, really cool. So what we need to do is I'm going to use this one as a template and we're just going to measure out where they're going to sit. Then I can take that, put it over top of here, bang each one with a hole, and then we can take that dash out. I can lay it in there, making sure it's centered properly where it needs to be. And then we can um, drill through all of them and rivet it in, paint the dash, mount everything, and see what it looks like. Very exciting. <laughs> That looks really good. So that falls in, that falls in. And then bang, bang, bang. Yeah, the gauges are really gonna make it, especially with the chrome around them. But I'm happy we use those little guys. They're not too, too intrusive. Like you don't really look at them too much. And then key right here. So gauge, gauge, key, and then we'll have to do uh, maybe up here like generator and high beam light. But that's, that looks really good. That's cool. I like that a lot. All right, so that's it. Job done. Box ticked, custom dash and engine turned insert. Really pleased with how that came out. Uh, traditionally, you know, the one that we we're saying 
the, out of Kyle's coop and it kind of sets back in that. Um, this is quite pronounced. It doesn't sit back kind of like they usually would, but I really like that. And it still follows this profile all the way across using that, that new header on there. And I'm stoked that we didn't do just like an oval panel. We actually brought the insert all the way to an edge. We didn't even radius it. I wanted it kind of a sharp edge there because that's kind of what happens in, in these little corners. They kind of pull together to a point. So I think once we get our two big gauges in and our two little ones on either side, as well as our key ignition, um, whether we do a press start or, or use the key itself, and then we'll have a generator light, high beam light, and probably signals, um, whether the signals are actually on the, the, the um, stock itself or if we'll have to put them in, but hopefully we can just have those on the stock. Um, but yeah, really pleased with that. I think like visually it's, it, it's really nice to look at, but I, I don't think you're gonna get the full impact until we actually have those gauges in and a steering wheel on there and it just will really complete it. For kind of a simple dash setup, um, I'm really happy with it. I'm stoked that we ended up actually um, using the, the blind rivets in there and uh, pressed them in, which just looks awesome too. So this is now not removable. Um, for cutting these out, I will use the hydraulic punch so we don't have to worry about kind of getting any burrs that'll sit between this panel and the, and the back one, uh, which is good. So I do have the exact punch we need to kind of punch it out for the gauges. Hopefully you guys kind of learned a little something to make your own kind of custom dash, whether you put that bottom bead in um, or you just want to make a, a, neat, a neat insert panel and you know you sit on the drill press and start getting lots of, uh, lots of these motions and get the engine turn kind of how you want it. Um, again, stainless would work really well too. You could do it out of brass. You could do it out of anything you want. So I think, um, yeah, hopefully those are just some helpful tips in order to kind of create what you want to do for your car or not even car. It could be something completely unrelated to cars and still look good. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, we will see you next week on a very special episode. Make sure you tune in, hit that like and subscribe button so you do not miss it. It's going to be a really good one. I'm very excited for it. I think Ben's and uh, Josh are both excited and um, yeah, it's gonna be really, really cool. Thank you very much. Thank you again for all your support as well. Um, it's just, yeah, I've, I, I say it on repeat a lot, but I genuinely mean it. It's great to go through all the comments and see all the positive feedback that we're getting. Um, and it just makes us very excited to keep, to continue creating all this content for you guys. And also we get to build badass hot rods. What more could you ask for?